On another issue facing the Jewish people, it's been 70 years since the liberation of the concentration camps in Nazi Germany, and the number of Holocaust survivors is dwindling. But a new technology is keeping their stories alive for the next generation. Paul Strand has that story. Sisters Rena and Danka Kornreich survived almost all of World War II together in Nazi death camps. In fact, Rena was on the first trainload of women sent to Auschwitz, fooled into thinking it was just a short-term work camp. 297 teenagers are on the first transport. 50 are dead in the first six months. Rena's promise documents how the sisters kept each other alive and helped many others. A key part of their survival, refusing to dwell on the reality of the daily gassings and killings going on all around them. She does see the, the um, SS pour, pour the Zyklon B into the, into the gas chamber, and she's on a work detail where she can see that. She never goes on that work detail again. She can't, she realizes that to see that is, is her spirit to die. Rena rose above it all after the war by putting Hitler and the Nazis behind her. She wholeheartedly embraced life and gave it, like to her only daughter, Sylvia. Apparently when I was born, my mother was just elated. And, um, you know, we've heard stories that she, you know, felt like this is the revenge on Hitler. The Nazis did at one point steal Rena's faith as she watched them march hundreds of little orphans into the gas chambers. About 500 children, and they're holding teddy bears, and, and, and she um, prays. As she begged God to stop the horror, a Nazi guard got right into her face. SS Hasse came up to her, spit in her face, and said, where is your God now? And that's the moment when Rena lost her faith in God. She also witnessed the Nazis kill off beautiful Jewish women, including her friend Adela Gross. They selected 2,000 healthy, young, beautiful women for the gas. Adela was healthy, she's redhead, gorgeous young woman, and Rena watched her go to the gas. It took decades, but Rena regained her faith as she saw thousands inspired by her book. And how the story is helping them to believe in survival, to believe in love to believe in the strength of the human spirit. And she said, there's only so much room in my heart, so I don't hate, I love. To hate is to let Hitler win. Rena and Donka ended up in America and remained close for some 50 years before Rena passed away in 2006. Donka died six years later, but their story is now chronicled forever. When you hear six million Jews and 10 million people total, that's such a phenomenal figure that it's very hard to put that into the reality of what happened there. And by having all the individuals that we can now tell stories about, including my mother and my aunt, that makes it real. These stories and those of other survivors keep this tragic part of history alive in the hope that it will never be repeated. New generations can better learn about the Holocaust through a new app produced by these men called Sacred Ground. Recording studio owner John Keel says the app transports users to Berlin's Holocaust Memorial. And there are these little stones that you start walking through and they get bigger and bigger and bigger until you're walking through these tunnels. And the, the message being is that this is how this kind of evil overtakes us. It grows until we're trapped. We've all seen those horrifying images from the Holocaust, the skin and bones bodies stacked high like cordwood. But what's important to remember is that each one of those bodies represents a life lived fully and richly before the Holocaust. It needs to be about the lives that they led and remembering that they were just like me and just like you until so someone declared that they were not. And it's not a declaration that can be made. You can also hear Baltimore rabbi Moshe Dov Shawali talk about his own family's horror. My name Moshe Dov is after my mother's dad, Moshe, who was murdered in the Ukraine in front of her when she was 16 and he was 46. He said the Holocaust, or Shoah, made him feel like a victim and he wanted to rise above that by rituals that would consecrate the millions of lives snuffed out. Cantor Emmanuel Perlman hopes the ritual prayers and music he and his co-producers put on this app will allow millions to memorialize those survivors and victims on every Holocaust Remembrance Day. There had never ever been, to my knowledge, any special prayers that were composed, written, for the Holocaust. Perlman grabbed up his first grandchild, Abner Judah, to point out how he hopes this app will serve the future. He'll be able to understand history 
in the way in which we see history from generation to generation. Then this proud new grandpa just rejoiced at this bundle of joy in his arms. It is important to remember the Holocaust, but also to have an antidote to it. Living fully, giving life, and celebrating all it has to offer. Paul Strand, CBN News, reporting from Baltimore.